the following video addresses the Boltzmann distribution part of the syllabus. We're going to look at the Boltzmann distribution curve, look at how the activation energy is highlighted on this curve, then having looked at those distribution of energies in a particular sample, we can look at what happens with the catalyst, what happens with different temperatures, and how in an exam, the examiner would want to test for this, and the points that they're looking for when drawing these curves. So, moving on. So, the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution of energies, or the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve, or simply the Boltzmann distribution of energies curve. Y axis, number of particles, X axis, the distribution of energy. This curve represents for a particular sample of a substance the distribution of energies found in all the different particles in that substance. Now, various parts of this need to be addressed. First of all, the origin where x and y meet. There is no particle with zero energy. Every particle must have some energy, even if it's only vibrating a little bit in its position. There is no particle with zero energy, therefore the curve starts at zero, zero, the origin, where the x and y axis meet. The end of the curve never touches the x axis, simply because there is no, theoretically, no particle with a maximum amount of energy. Every time you have a particle with the most energy for that sample, potentially it can get some more. So it never actually touches the x-axis. There's an overall chunk of particles with this range of energies, very few with a small amount of energy, a small amount of particles with a very large amount of energy. Now, on this graph also we can appreciate Ea, activation energy, the minimum energy required for a reaction to occur. If you think back to our early lectures, molecules, when they collide, provided they're in the correct orientation, if they have enough energy greater than the activation energy, which these molecules shaded here do, they can then collide with a successful collision, i.e. a reaction can occur. However, at a catalyst, it lowers the activation energy by providing an alternative pathway. We now have more particles with energy greater than the activation energy, which has been lowered to this value, all of these extra molecules along with these can now collide and react successfully, so it's increased the rate of reaction. These particles behind the activation energy have less energy than the activation energy, would not collide and have a successful collision, they would simply bounce away. We can now appreciate another part of this curve. The area under the curve represents the total number of particles in that sample that is being discussed. If, however, we draw onto this a higher temperature curve, we can see at a higher temperature the curve shifts to the right, the peak is lower into the right of T1, which is at a lower temperature, T2 being the higher temperature, and at this higher temperature we've now got more particles Notice how the curve ends at a higher level than the T1. There are now more particles with energy greater than the activation energy. Therefore, these extra particles can also react successfully. The number of particles at a higher temperature, we've seen this in an earlier video, so I'm reiterating this. The number of particles at a higher temperature with energy greater than the activation energy has increased. And particles simply have more kinetic energy. So overall, the number of collisions are also increasing, therefore the rate of reaction is increasing. So, on a higher temperature T2, you're expected to redraw a graph as shown here. The peak lower into the right, curve looks shifted to the right. The area under the curve of T2 is exactly the same as T1. The idea being they both have the same number of particles, that's not changed. All that's happened is the temperature has increased. So, temperature 1, temperature 2, temperature 1 is lower, temperature 2 is higher. You are expected in the exam to be able to label these axes, or at least be able to draw T1, lower temperature looking at a T2 graph, or alternatively, a T2, higher temperature graph, having observed a T1, lower temperature graph. Drawing these graphs are normally worth two or three marks. And then, to label the activation energy and use it to then explain how the collision theory helps us understand reactions occurring, and how this curve can also, with respect to the catalyst, show us an increased rate of reaction. That would be, of course, separate marks. 
Here is an example of a question, fairly typical with respect to Boltzmann distribution. I'll give you a couple of minutes to have a look at this. Pause the video now, and after a few seconds I'll reveal my answer. But once you've paused the video, take your time in reading the question, and then understanding what you have to do, and see how your answer compares with mine. So my answer. The question refers to the Haber process, as you saw here, nitrogen and hydrogen reacting to form ammonia. We've addressed this in a previous video. The enthalpy change for the forward reaction is an exothermic minus 92 kilojoules per mole. The diagram shows the distribution of energies in a sample of nitrogen gas, the activation energy required for its reaction with hydrogen in the Haber process. It's a nice story. What the examiner is trying to test here is the Boltzmann distribution part of the syllabus, not specifically the Haber process. It's using the example. Chances are in the exam, this question may have continued on to talk about reversible reactions. However, today, this video, I'm just simply addressing the Boltzmann distribution part of the syllabus. So, you've got distribution curve, T1, activation energy marked. Part A, complete the diagram to illustrate the distribution of energies at a lower not higher, lower temperature T2, label the diagram with EC for the activation energy in the presence of an iron catalyst. So using the example of the Haber process, they're trying to test a few different things. Let's see what my answer would have been. Here, the lower temperature T2, the red curve, is now peaking to the left and higher of T1, which is the higher temperature. T2 is now showing the same area under the curve effectively. Keep in mind you're freehand drawing these in the exam so your accuracy is not needed to be super. What you need to have is specifically the peak to the left and higher starting from the origin, the red lower temperature curve in this case ending at a lower height than T1, the green higher temperature curve. Examiner is looking for one, two, three things in the exam if you've got that part of the curve correct when drawing a lower temperature curve compared to what's on the exam paper. What we also see is the activation energy EC is going to be less than the activation energy without a catalyst. So with a catalyst activation energy is lowered, keep in mind it's an alternative path with a lower activation energy, and now more particles of energy greater than the activation energy. So having done that, scored our marks. Part B, using the diagram explain the effect of iron on the rate of reaction in the Haber process. So having shown the presence of an iron catalyst lowering the activation energy, my answer, the iron catalyst lowers the activation energy therefore allowing more particles to have energy greater than the activation energy as shown here. So increasing the number of successful collisions therefore increasing the rate of reaction. Part C, what kind of catalyst is iron? Explain your answer. Well, iron itself is a solid catalyst. The reactants are gases, so iron is a heterogeneous catalyst because it's solid and the reactants, nitrogen and hydrogen, are gases, so it's in a different physical state to the reactants. Part D1, state and explain one benefit each for the presence of iron to an industrialist making ammonia. Well, to an industrialist, the industrialist can make more ammonia per day because iron increases the rate of reaction. Other answers you could have said, saves money due to lower operating costs, working at lower temperatures and pressure, than of course fewer waste products. To the environment, less carbon emissions from fossil fuel, burning as the process can happen at a lower temperature and pressure. Other answers could have been, ammonia can be used as a fertilizer so more plants and trees can grow, reducing the CO2 levels in the air. Also, the presence of a catalyst is safer because Gases are flammable, especially hydrogen, and the reaction is occurring at lower temperatures and pressures, therefore making the industrial environment more safer because of these flammable gases at higher temperatures would have been more dangerous. At lower temperatures and pressures, that safety is that bit more better for these flammable gases being used. hope that was a good help. Other questions and answers are available on the Q&A video. Let's move on in the syllabus.